it could be the ultimate video game showdown. I'm talking about Halo 4 versus the Call of Duty. The outcome will tell much about the industry's future. Ian Sher, he is in San Francisco. He's been writing about uh, this for us. Halo 4, big bet here. Tell us about the game. When's it coming out and what's at stake? Well, it comes out next week. It's on November 6th. And um, it is the uh, kind of the, the, the latest really big installment in this multi-billion dollar franchise. Uh, Halo itself, which um, is something that Microsoft brought to market with the original Xbox about more than a decade ago, um, has become the cornerstone of the Xbox franchise, uh, which is their video game console. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, it's the whole franchise, so the video games, the, uh, the comic books, the, the novels, all of that, the toys, um, reference it roughly around $3 billion. Um, and so this is a big deal. This, uh, this game coming out is going to be one of the hardest pushes that Microsoft has ever made. Um, the other part about it is that it's the first time that Microsoft is not using the original developers to make it, uh, which makes it a very kind of big bet. Um, if this game doesn't do well, it could really tarnish the, uh, the, the kind of Xbox brand. It could hurt the uh, kind of their, again, their, their kind of crown jewel um, and all of that. And then the other part of this, which is really interesting, is that, of course, uh, a week later than that, so on November 13th, uh, we have Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which is the uh, latest installment in that series. And Call of Duty, which is also a war simulation shooter, um, is, is actually a huge franchise in and of itself. Um, the game that came out last year, it's an annual series, uh, actually ended up uh, getting to a billion dollars in sales faster than Avatar did, which was, uh, as we all know, one of the top grossing movies of all time. Um, it, it did that in 16 days. So this is not small potatoes. These are huge franchises. These mean a lot to these companies. And uh, more than anything, it's also about the kind of uh, the strength in the market that it shows as well. And you say not small potatoes. I mean, the entire video game industry made about $15.1 billion last year, projected to grow about 23% to, to almost $19 billion in 2016. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that compared to the film industry. I mean, a lot of these video games almost like being in a movie experience, Ian. Uh, how is the video gaming industry growing compared to the film industry? Well, it's, it's growing very well. As you, as you mentioned, the, the percentage growth is actually doing pretty well. Um, what's, what's, what's interesting also is that the two are starting to intertwine. Um, so I spent a lot of time actually watching how Halo was being developed. And one of the really interesting things about it is that they spent a lot of time trying to create a very immersive story. Uh, they wanted to give the backstory to the main hero. And they spent a lot of time trying to make it look very visually pleasing. Um, and, in fact, game, uh, the, 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 the game visuals and whatnot have gotten so advanced at this point that the budgets have roughly doubled in the last 10 years. Wow. And it takes uh, an average of about 100 people to make a game. But this game, Halo 4, they had 340. They had more than 340 people working on it. So to give you a sense, I mean, this is a, this is a huge undertaking. And, the, the, you know, Bobby Kotick, who's the head of Activision, which makes Call of Duty, has often said that he believes that the video game industry and the movie industries are eventually going to very much merge. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of foretelling that these budgets are going higher and higher. Um, the average budget for a, mo uh, for a video game is around $20 million, but estimates for Halo 4 were more than $40 million. So, again, you, you get an idea. It's not, it's not huge Avatar numbers, which were hundreds of millions, but we're getting there. Very quickly, Ian, I mean, they're spending all these money developing these games for, for, for console games, and yet they're facing all this competition on the Internet front uh, from right. gaming there, which is a lot cheaper to develop and put out. Yes, but the difference that they will argue, and um, you know, a lot of gamers agree with them, obviously, is that the, the immersive experience that these console quality games that cost millions to make um, is, is well worth it. And they, you know, while they, they make it back to 60 bucks a pop, which is the cost of the game when you buy it at retail, uh, they're doing quite well. So you know, the, the argument that they make is that this is a worthwhile endeavor. And certainly a lot of the growth in the industry right now is coming from mobile games right. like Angry Birds and social games. But it's not, you know, you can't ignore that there are still millions and millions and billions of sales in the console industry, which is uh, part of what makes this all very interesting. They're all, they're still fighting over this part of the pie.